I hope you're not here to attack me. If I die before I stabilize this portal, you'll be trapped here. Since killing me is off the table, I could use some help. My father, Rulantaril, is missing. He disappeared from his workshop in Davin's Watch. I think his disappearance has some connection to this place. I want to know what, and then find him if I can. He was there one day, and gone the next. His notes call this place Crow's Wood. It's the only clue I have. I thought I saw an old house up the trail. Could you take a look? I need to stabilize this portal. I must concentrate or the portal will close. Excuse me. Perhaps I didn't think it through. I was hoping it would prevent random passers-by from entering the portal. I suppose I should have disguised it as something less... intriguing. Well, live and learn. Since you're here, I could use some assistance. the domain of the Black Feather Court. You must pay the toll, flesh or silver. Choose! Then, well, things will go badly for you. Droppings on your shiny clothes. Yes, that's it. An incessant cawing will keep you awake all through the night. Do not cross Black Feather Court, intruder! There are two tolls you can pay. The toll of flesh or the toll of silver. Choose! The toll of flesh commits you to fight our enemies, the wretched bats of this wood. Each time you kill a bat, we'll descend to feast upon the bat's tender bits. The toll of silver Search the dark caves and the farthest corners of the woods. Collect trinkets of shiny silver left by those who fell to the wolves. Glitter and glister! Such trinkets please us with their luster! Speak then, featherless one! Then we shall feast on our foes. When you have killed four and four of the flying rats, find the Seneschal of Carrion. There you are. What did you find out? Chilling. Look at this place. It was deliberately set on fire. Interesting. Why was my father here? And who is this witch he mentioned? I stabilized the portal, but it's not going to stay that way. I need to attend to it. Would you go to the court my father mentioned? Maybe someone there knows of his fate.
want something featherless? Ah, yes, the Dark Elf. He was a diligent student. He's somewhat crass. Talented, to be sure. But there was something off-putting about him. My suspicions were confirmed when he locked Crow Mother in the tower. Of course, she got her way in the end. Crow Mother is lonely. She doesn't get many visitors, and we, her children, aren't the best company. Hard to believe, but true. We agreed that if we'd teach Rulantaril the secrets of magic, he would return to her side. Yes! The bargain's power brought him to her side and locked him in the tower. It's just as well, really. You want to talk to them? Rulantaril left his tower key in a ruined structure nearby. It's in a cursed chest with a fiery guardian. You! Knave tells me you choose Toll of Flesh. True? True? The court is fat and happy. The bats are dead, and we have fed. Eyes and wings and skin and ears, such tender bits. We are pleased with your tribute, Featherless. The Duke wishes to speak with you. The Featherless has paid the toll. Let this be known throughout the wood. Approaches, approaches! Indeed, your efforts will be rewarded, my featherless subject. You are the first to satisfy the terms of our toll. I hereby bestow upon you citizenship in these woods, as well as vassal servants to aid you. Welcome to Crow's Wood, fledgling. Take care of your new vassals, fledgling. Questions? We charge you a toll, yet you want to talk instead of pecking us? Miraculous. Speak! What? What? We are crows. Do crows not hold court where you come from? Do they not cluster, conspiring and plotting and politicking? Watch them more closely, more carefully. Pay attention next time. Crow Mother hatched us, taught us to talk. She made me the Duke, for I am the smartest and biggest and loudest. But then she forgot us. I think she was tired of our cawing and wanting. Want, want, want. We want. The crow must leave the nest and fly. Crow Mother has left us dominion over the wood, and our war with bats and wolves keeps us busy. Enough talk, fledgling. The wood is yours to explore. Go!
We bargained in good faith. All fair and square. You can't have him. Why recoil so? Am I truly so hideous? Would you spurn me as Rulantaril did years ago? Yes, Rulantaril is here. We made a bargain, but he thought to renege by binding me in this tower. He still fights me. He doesn't want to stay. Make him see reason. Make him honor our agreement. Sweet Rulantaril came to me, the nether niece of the Nocturnal, to learn the secrets of the forgotten magic. In exchange, when the time came, he was to return to keep me company. That was our bargain, sealed in blood and arcane runes. He tried to avoid his responsibilities, but the magic wouldn't allow it. He made a tiny miscalculation. When he left, that hurt me deeply. He used me, but I forgive him. He must stop fighting and stay with me. Do you know? Very well, intruder. Tell me. Thank you. He's raging in the corridors below us, trying to blast his way out with magic. The magic we taught him. Please, don't kill him. I don't want to be alone. sent you, didn't she? I'm not staying in this cursed place. of our deal. be a lot of bickering when my son gets here. You have a son. I can't wait to meet him. He can stay here with us. There's plenty of room. Great. Just great. You're back. Did you find my father? He's alive, though. Aeum, bless you, my friend. I'll get things squared away here and make my way to the tower. I can't believe my fortune running into you here. 
thank you for your help. I must finish this. Ah, you've arrived at last. Come forward. We have much to discuss. You've arrived. I am Devaith Fear, Wizard Lord of Telfear. I trust no further introduction is necessary. I seek a Daedric artifact. It lies hidden in a brass city filled with danger, curiosity, and contradiction. You will accompany me, if you wish. A voyage that only a few have ever undertaken. We will travel to Sotha Seal's peculiar experiment, the Clockwork City. I have inquiries to make. You will assist me. I do. The Tribunes are not so clever that they could hide such a place from me for long. The city is quite close, and also very far away. Just the first of Sotha Seal's many paradoxes. If you choose to join me, be prepared for many more. You saved the life of a living god. Yes, I know all about your service to Vivek and your conflict with Clavicus Vile. Foiling the plans of a Daedric prince is no mean feat. I can think of no better companion for my journey to the Clockwork City. Of course you will. Naturally, you have questions. Alas, they will have to wait. Servants of the Tribunal do not look kindly on blasphemous journeys like this one. Meet me at the waterfall north of the city. We can discuss the details there. Prepare if you must, but make it quick. Time is not on our side. There you are. Come, here, behind the waterfall. My companion arrives at last. Now then, our journey begins in this dreary little cave. Quite a surprise, yes? Believe me, it won't be the last. We can speak freely here, but do make it brief. All this natural splendor is just... tedious. Sotha Seal hides everything. But more to your point, it's not just a city. It's an incomprehensibly powerful, world-shaping device. Can't leave that sort of thing lying about, can you? Also, Alma Lexia worries about how it reflects on her divinity. Draftier than I remembered. Follow me. Welcome to the dwarven hold of Barm's Arm Shen. Such as it is. Ironic that AM's holy city of Mournhold has Dwemric roots, don't you think? Curious. Practically no one knows this route, but this scaffolding looks new. Built by rogue ordinators, perhaps? Stay watchful. Sotha Seal always did admire dwarven industry, albeit quietly. Perhaps that's why he built his city here. This lift will take us to the nethermost depths of the ruin, and to our destination. Come along. Lies just ahead. Do 
You see, just across the ravine. That's our door. but nothing can prepare you for what's to come. Touch the sphere. The clockwork city awaits. What in the... This is not the brass fortress. Someone diverted our passage. Audacious, but foolhardy. When I find them, I... I'm in no condition to navigate this maze. Go. Find a way to deactivate these traps. Perhaps I failed to impress the gravity of our situation upon you. If my shadow gets away, we may never escape this place. So if you have something to say, say it quickly. something more. In removing my shadow, our attacker removed some vital part of my animus. My soul, in the common parlance. Without it, my power is severely diminished. Needless to say, this, this will not do. This may surprise you, but I've never had my shadow ripped from my body. Even so, I will devise a solution. Don't trouble yourself with the finer details. Just be prepared to fight. Much will depend on your ability. Do not fail me. Not yet. We should have translocated directly to the Brass Fortress, Seal's chief municipality here in the Clockwork City. But somehow we ended up here, vexing. One step at a time, if you please. We need only to find a landmark or map or something. Once I determine where we are, it won't take long to find an exit. Just leave that to me. You focus on these traps. now. 
the pneumatic forge. We should leave as soon as possible. So the seal constructs his clockwork servitors here, the factotums. They reject anyone who doesn't belong. Someone meant for us to die here. This monstrosity, but don't kill it. I must reclaim my power. way to go. Behold, the Clockwork City. Finally. Sothaseel's brass fortress waits at the end of this road. We should go there at once. I'm keen to find out who sent us on that delightful jaunt through the Pneumatis. Faith fear, I warned you never to come back. And you, one of fear's lackeys, I take it. Luciana Pullo. Hospitable as ever? Go talk to her. I'll not waste my time speaking with a petulant toy soldier. Hold there, friend of fear. I am Proctor Luciana Pulo of the Clockwork Apostles. I don't know how you and this egomaniac breached Lord Set's Celestia drone, but I won't have non-citizens stirring up mischief in the Brass Fortress. Only just arrived and already trying to grease the gears? New arrivals must secure an endorsement from a citizen in good standing. I'm prepared to overlook your atrocious choice in companions if you can find a sponsor. Until then, you are tarnished. That's for you to find out. Not many citizens will risk their reputation on a green-heeled stranger, and you'll find no comfort from me. Maybe you should confer with the other tarnished over there. In the meantime, obey the law. I'll be watching. Tread carefully, Fear. I'll be watching. Lushana clearly hasn't lost her charming demeanor. Predictable. Ah, yes. Their bizarre sponsorship custom. I forgot about that little wrinkle. As a friend and peer of Sotha Seal, I come and go as I please. I suppose it would be best for you to wait out here. If I need you again, I will find you. I'm not a citizen. And even if I were, I'd not waste time wading through their opaque bureaucracy. You've proven yourself to be more than capable. 
I have no doubt you'll figure something out. Gain your sponsorship. We will speak again soon. I appreciate your assistance in the pneumatic forge, but for now, our paths must diverge. The artifact we seek will not remain in one place for long. I can ill afford a delay. Navigate this absurd ritual quickly, and I will find you again afterward. One of Sotha Seal's greater lackeys, chief proctor of the Clockwork Apostles. You might have noticed some mild cosmetic flaws. Honestly, I think she's more automaton than flesh and blood. She certainly acts the part. Seal takes all kinds. Imperials, Bretons, even Argonians. Luciana may be one of his oldest servants. She served Emperor Riemann Cyrodiil as a battle mage in her younger years. Made quite a name for herself during the Akaviri invasion. According to the legend, she was caught in a torrent of arcane energy during a battle with a rival mage. It mangled her body and sent her hurtling through the veil. She eventually crashed here. Seal found her shortly thereafter and mended her wounds. Indeed. At first, I thought she served him out of some cheap obligation. Reciprocity for his kindness. But apparently, she really believes in this place. I heard they had a bit of a falling out. She still serves him, though, in her dog-like fashion. People like her rarely are. You see, I present a destabilizing influence. I reject all illusions of authority and thus reject their entire way of life. Hierarchy, ritual, reverence, it's all a sham. I respect power, not absurd social constructs. Yes, a monastic order of sorts. They serve Sotha Seal through magical inquiry. Apostles fancy themselves iconoclasts who push the boundaries of magical praxis. There's a seed of truth there, I suppose, but they're still obnoxious. <laughs> you mean, are they all half-metal monstrosities? <laughs> More or less. Some modify themselves more than others. It's a form of reverence. They want to be more like Sotha Seal. You see, Seal has some peculiar... Well, I'll let you see for yourself. Seal has many names. Sotha Seal, Set, Sea, the Clockwork God, on and on. Tiresome, if you ask me. The Clockwork Apostles mostly refer to him as Set, his verse and sermon name. I call him Seal, because I'm not a doe-eyed idiot. Another newcomer, eh? Come, let's talk. Well, if it isn't my second favorite assistant. What a fortuitous turn of events. I shouldn't be surprised. You have a knack for appearing when I need you most. I take it you haven't found a sponsor yet. Maybe we can help each other. Initially, I thought we could rely on my ample charms to win us a sponsor. Unfortunately, the people here tend to value craft over the pleasure of my company. Providing some gift or service seems to be the only way to earn a sponsorship. Yes, a clockwork apostle named Varuni Arvel. Apparently, she's a member of the Congress of Calibration, the governing body here in the city. My associates, Kirith and Raynor, are already working on a plan to earn her trust. Will you help us?
This promises to be a fruitful collaboration. I tasked Kirith and Raynor with acquiring gifts for Varuni, but they tend to wander. Kirith's just there by the cliff. You should speak with her. In the meantime, I'll conduct more research. Questions? Seeing as you found your own way here, I suppose there's no harm in sharing my own methods. I just learned of a secret cave beneath the city of Mournhold that, until recently, was entirely inaccessible. Can you imagine? Fearing that the Tribunal might seal it again, I set off through the cavern as soon as I could. It pained me to leave my usual cohorts behind, but this duo, Kirith and Reynor, have performed admirably. So that pompous high elf got his hooks in you too, huh? I told my brother Raynor we should go it alone, but any house in an ash storm, right? Speaking of Raynor, he might need your help. Depends on your definition of trouble, I guess. He's down in the ravine, playing with the firepot spiders for some reason. He wouldn't tell me more. Unfortunately, those spiders have a tendency to, you know, explode. Like I said, he didn't want to discuss it. Probably whipped up an automata disrupting spoon twirler or something. He gets like this sometimes. Just check in on him, all right? He's clumsy and those apostles' mechanical limbs look expensive. Thanks for the help. Rain or smart, but you can't smart a spider to death, you know? Well, Naramo said we needed something to offer this Varuni character, but from what I can tell, she doesn't really need anything. So I asked myself, what do you get the person who has everything? A home-cooked meal, Argonium pottery, or information. Since I'm a terrible cook, and we're worlds away from Black Marsh, I think I'll go with the third thing. This brass fortress is brimming with gossip. I just need to listen for it. Wish me luck. Sergeant Baldan, this one has the gold you requested. Will you still sponsor me? I gave you my word, didn't I? Come, cat. We can discuss the specifics in my office. A thousand blessings, Walker. Lankin has much to offer the Brass Fortress. Yes, I'm sure you do. Hello again. So strange. I am glad to see you, but I must admit, the statistics are staggering. What are the odds of us meeting here, again, in an extra planar space? Rhetorical, of course. Honestly, I am glad you're here. Kirith? So you've joined our band of outsiders. Welcome. Now look. I may lack Kirith's natural talent with a blade, but I can accomplish this on my own. Varuni's sure to sponsor us once I deliver this. Oh, who am I kidding? I do need your help. These firepot spiders contain a highly unstable oil-like fluid. The dangers inherent to acquiring it make it very valuable indeed. I discovered a way to prevent the spiders from detonating. But even diffused, they're more than capable of killing me. So you'll do it? Yes, of course! 
If you attract the spider's attention, I can use this tonal dampener to disarm their ignition coils. Just a simple matter of inverting their threat assessment array and... Sorry. I can get carried away sometimes. Brilliant! We really made short work of those spiders, didn't we? Here, you can carry the oil. Take the oil to Varuni. Naramo said she has an office in the Clockwork Basilica. Hopefully this will be enough to earn a sponsorship. If you don't mind, I'll accompany you to the gate. Can't be too careful out here. Again, thank you. Good luck in the Basilica. And just as I promised, my assistant arrives. You brought a gift for our sponsor, right? Greeting, Auxiliary. Is your friend correct? Did you bring an offering? Fire, Patwo. Tremendous. And you managed to keep all ten fingers. I'm impressed. Thank you. Now, to the matter of your citizenship, you're clearly a capable warrior, but in the Clockwork City, mental precision is of paramount importance. A number of outsiders have gone missing in recent weeks. I fear someone might be abducting them, or worse. But I have no proof. I spoke to your friend Naramu, and he insists you can gather the evidence I need. Succeed, and I'll sponsor you all. Try to keep this inquiry quiet, all right? In the Clockwork City, even a small creak in the gears can draw curious eyes. Very little, which is more problematic than it sounds. Any loose cog can carry out an abduction. It doesn't take a criminal mastermind to throw someone down a drain pipe. What worries me is that none of it was recorded by factotums or sentry coils. We record what happens everywhere. Honestly, I don't know how you exodromals do without. You lose so much in Tamriel. Knowledge, memories, and you must argue incessantly. Everything that happens here is fact. 
documented and verifiable. Exodromal, sorry. I forget how strange our words sound to foreign ears. Anyone who enters the Clockwork City from the outside world is known as an Exodromal, since they come from beyond the Celestial Drome, the glass sphere you'd call our sky. I know, but secrets are the purview of Lord Set and Lord Set alone. I have nothing to hide. The sermons tell us that only the disassembled engine can be scrubbed and made clean. Knowledge requires light, openness, collaboration, you see? Of course, Lord Set, known to many as Sotha Seal, is the father of curiosity. By his word, we create, perfect, and overcome. He cares for all of us, just as a clockmaker cares for each gear and spring. Every piece matters, no matter how small. I do a lot of reading. It's all there in the sermons. Some people think he's aloof, callous even, but I disagree. He stands with us in a way that Vivek and Almalexia never could, and he'll guide us all to a better world. So, ready to do a bit of sleuthing? I'm confident that we can find this elusive evidence, but it will require some skullduggery, breaking and entering to be specific. Ready for the details? Varuni suspects that someone destroyed city records. But if my study of Dwemer ruins has taught me anything, it's that nothing is ever truly destroyed. You just need to look in the right place. Here, that place is the Depository Documatus. Sneaking into the Depository is impossible for us. But Sothasil's clockwork automata enter and exit the structure constantly. I discovered a way to control one such automata, a device known as a skivaton. I am sure you're duly impressed. No, you are. I will provide technical assistance and keep an eye out for prying eyes, both mechanical and organic. Head to the depository. I'll meet you there, after I've wrapped up matters with our new benefactor. If you have questions, you should ask them now. Once we begin our investigation, we'll have little time to dawdle. Honestly? They're not all that dissimilar from the Dwemer devices I usually tinker with. Sothasil clearly learned a great deal from the dwarves. They use an unfamiliar tonal dialect, as it were. But the basic principles remain the same. We will employ a very simple control device. How to explain it? The Skivatons send and receive signals from other clockwork automatons constantly. This device allows us to drown out all the noise, making our voices the only sound it hears. As Varuni said, everything here generates a record. From what I gather, those records constantly pass through the depository documatus. When you say it like that, it does sound daunting. It's true. The evidence we seek drifts through vast oceans of information. Luckily, these skivatons seem very capable when it comes to sorting and passing. I guess we'll just have to find out. I equipped the Skivaton with a number of key words and concepts to help it sort out extraneous documents. Have some faith! 
I've extracted information from tonal vaults and Dwemer orreries. Sifting through city records pales in comparison. As I said before, those tarnished redundants down in the slums are no concern of yours. I've instructed the constabulary to keep a strict eye on them. Yes, that constable Baldon's done an admirable job. Even so, tarnished and exodromals enter the Basilica far too often. And what of these rumors? Black-robed figures lurking on the edge of the radius? Honestly, Diwa, settle the boil, isn't it? I will never let tarnished or exodromals or mysterious robed ghosts disrupt our work, believe me. We have a strong signal. Now, to find Faruni's evidence. Expertly done. That grate should lead to the central depository and our evidence. This depository should contain security documents and recordings. Search everywhere. When you find something, use a skeveton to make a remote copy. Assistant, direct the Skivaton to the exit, then meet me there to examine the evidence. Let me see what you found. Yes, I believe these recordings correspond to the dates of the disappearances. There's something more. Look here. The last person to access the records was a BAL-167. <sighs> Circumstantial at best. We might already have a lead. I shared Varuni's concerns with Kirath shortly after you left the Basilica, and she insisted on looking into the matter herself. She cited Constable Baldon as a person of interest. His office should be southwest of here. Ah, there you are. Done playing with Naramo's wind-up toys? I think I'm onto something. I did a little asking around. Word is, Constable Baldan will sponsor anyone as long as they can pay. Where they go after he takes their gold, that's anybody's guess. Luckily, we're here to sort it out. Here, take this memory stone. I surveyed the building. Someone left the door to Baldan's storage loft unlocked. It should provide a great view of his office. Climb up there and wait. When I offer a bribe, you record the conversation on that memory stone. Then we've got him.
right, Baldan? I've got your gold. Will you sponsor me for citizenship? Oh, I'll take your offering. But sponsorship? That's for the living, you tarnished scum. The living what? Do it. Well, what are you idling for? Gather up the gold and dump her with the others. We don't want anyone finding our latest visitor. There you are! Naramo said you'd be around here somewhere. Have you seen Kirith? Is she with you? He what? How could she... We have to rescue her! You don't have any idea where they took her, do you? Yes, of course. I'll get help. Maybe I could even put together some kind of tonal locator. Bah! Not enough time. What would Kirith do? She would investigate. Yes. Talk to the people in Slagtown. They know practically everything about this place. I'll get the others. You hurry off to Slagtown. That's what the locals call the slums in the northeast corner of the fortress. I must admit, I was surprised to find a tenement like that in Sothasil's holy city. Then again, practically everything here has come as a surprise. Spare a few coins. I've had nothing to eat but wire and dirt. Have mercy. I might have seen a woman like that, sure. I'd have seen her dark skin and red eyes, heard her squawking like a broken skivaton, but I can't say for certain. Sure would be easier to remember if I had a full stomach. Thank you. Now, listen well. Baldan's thugs took your friend to the mechanical fundament. Guaranteed. It's a maze beneath the city. Nobody ever comes out. If you want to run after your friend, go ahead. But I suggest you stay out of that place. Threw you in here too, did they? I knew I couldn't be the only one Constable Baldan got the drop on. You're right, we should. And I could, but not yet. I met another one of Baldan's victims, a Khajiit named Lankin. He's been scraping it out down here, but he's no warrior. I told him I'd get him out. Unfortunately, we got separated. That's the spirit. I managed to yank this sword out of a corpse nearby. It's not much, but you don't need a sharp edge to deal with these factotums. Just a heavy swing and a lot of patience. You ready? Let's get moving.
Finally! Come with us, Lankin. We're getting you out of here. Friend Kirith, bright moons above, please, let's leave this dungy place. Suppose you found anything of interest down there? Enough. I'm glad to see you weren't lying, Reynor Vanos. That bastard, Baldan, threw me into the fundament! <sighs> Ridiculous. I've never seen this woman in my life. Liar! You tossed this one in as well! This Reynor Vanos made some very bold claims. If you have evidence of Constable Baldon's crimes, I suggest you produce it. Huh. You're more resourceful than you look. Little wonder Devaith chose you as his companion. Set knows he needs the help. I'll hold Baldon under guard until I've had an opportunity to review the evidence. As for you, you're free to go. Luciana, I'd like to ask the constable a few questions when we return to the Basilica. Don't trouble yourself, Aruni. You know how persuasive I can be. I do. That's what worries me. Do your worst, you tin-legged hag. Set help you if she does, constable. That fool has no idea what he's in for. Live uncomfortably and learn, I suppose. Oh, most certainly. Baldan can't have accomplished all this by himself. Erasing records? Accessing derelict sections of the Fundament? These aren't the acts of a simple mur. Someone helped him. Now it's just a matter of finding out who. I do one way or another. For now, let's celebrate your achievement. You showed initiative, creativity, bravery, all qualities befitting a servant of Set. You shall have my sponsorship. Of course, each of them played a role in your success, and each of them will share the rewards. Go speak to the Clockwork Registrar in the Chancel of Records. It will add your name to the codices, and you'll be one of us. Again, you have my thanks. You'll regret this! Mark me, Proctor! You will regret this! I doubt that. Get this tarnished piece of scrap out of my sight. Enjoy prison, you scheming brat. Oh, it seems I arrived just in time. Done, assistant. One quick trip to the Clockwork Registrar, and we'll be full citizens of the Brass Fortress. Potential resident, please speak your birth name, followed by the name of your sponsor. Dreaming, torch box, overturned jar, sponsorship confirmed and archived. The light of knowledge, so the seal, welcomes you to the brass fortress. Go forth and create. Well, I'd say that all worked out splendidly.
As one journey ends, another begins. I imagine there's much more to discover here in Sothasil's clockwork city. I can finally begin my exploration in earnest. Now that we've earned our citizenship, I can apply for excavation permits, antiquity transportation licenses. Oh dear. Come to think of it, I might not be able to begin for quite some time. They proved useful. Raynor's theories need some work, and Kira's refusal to listen to reason caused me no small measure of anxiety. But on the whole, satisfactory. Provided that they follow my lead, I might call on them again in the future. I value your service and partnership, Assistant. Please take this as a token of my appreciation. If I understand the bureaucracy correctly, I may be here in the Brass Fortress for a while. Feel free to seek me out, should you require my aid. There you are. Good. We have much to discuss. Do they fear? Here? It is a true pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes, I, I imagine it is now, and I'll be on your way. Yes. Well, uh, be seeing you, Assistant. Good day, Lord Fear. Come, we need to talk. So you're a citizen now. Well done. I heard something about a constable tossing people down sewer drains. Even in this shrine to knowledge, drooling idiots bumble their way to power. <laughs> Ludicrous. Moving on, I require your services once more. It's Sotha Seal. Shortly after you and I parted company, I sought him out to discuss our Daedric artifact. I fear something is askew. His habits, his diction, the, the timbre of his voice, they've all changed. Albeit subtly. Worse. Initially, I dismissed it as boredom, fatigue, or even the first signs of senility. But now, after observing him at length, I can say with certainty, this is not the Sotha Seal I know. There's Daedric mischief here. We will root it out. We will leverage your hard-earned citizenship to make inquiries. First, I will make it known that in light of your recent exploits, I offered to take you on as my aid, an offer you eagerly accepted. As the most powerful mage in the Brast Fortress, I find it difficult to have proper conversations with common folk. They grow silent at my approach, then whisper as I leave. An appropriate, but sadly uninformative, display of deference. Indeed. It's commonly understood that servants grumble about their masters, loudly, to those they consider equals. Ask them about Sotha Seal's recent behavior. I'm confident we'll find something of value tucked away in their churlish complaints. You have questions, of course. Ask what you must. The forces at work here are cunning indeed. You should be prepared for anything. He is inscrutable, but he's also unflinching. Seal always moves deliberately, quietly, one step at a time, like clockwork. I have never once seen him divert from his course. Until now. In the short time we've been here, he has twice adjusted city patrol routes and delivered three revisions to the fortress charter. Trust me when I say this is unprecedented. So the seal never meddles like this. That's for you to discover. Don't bother speaking with members of the Congress. Varuni's faith in Sotha Seal is unbreakable. 
Chancellor Gascogne resents any threat to the status quo. And Luciana, well, well, let's just say she's been less than helpful. Luciana resents my presence, but she's no fool. I go where I please, when I please. An open confrontation between us would likely leave hundreds dead. So do not trouble yourself. She will not stand in the way of our investigation. Your lord fears newest steward, huh? Can we talk later? If I don't finish this lamp inventory, Gascon will feed me to the fabricants. Yeah, Gascon must know how much I love doing paperwork. A few days ago, Soth the Seal ordered us to rip out all the lamps in here and replace them with less efficient ones. What kind of sense does that make? Who wants weaker lamps? A bunch of factotums loaded them onto a dolly and dumped them somewhere in the mechanical fundament. Hey, I know that look. If you're looking to poach a free lamp, don't bother. Gascon made us slag them all. And that's not even the worst part. Half the old switches don't work with the new lamp, so we've had to manufacture new switches, and half the time the switches get installed backwards, which means we have to do it all over again. Even the factotums don't know what they're doing. And don't even get me started on the lamp assembly. So the seal could have turned the fabricators to make the new lamps with a flick of his finger, but he demanded that we do it instead. Do you have any idea how complex the fabricators are? So you're the one Devaith tapped to be his aide in the Brass Fortress. Sorry to hear that. Provost Varuni's ancestors hail from House Telvami, just like Lord Fear. But honestly, they couldn't be more different. Not as bad as you might expect. She's young, youth comes with impatience, but I've never felt unfairly judged, and she's generous with her praise. Honestly, if I had the choice between serving Varuni or Sotha Seal, I'd take Varuni every time. Now more than ever, I don't pretend to understand his motives, but he's never been so demanding. One example? He insists that we turn all the lights down before he enters a room. Do you have any idea how difficult that is? It's maddening! Huh. Flipping switches. That's rich. Each lamp has its own switch, and some lamps have multiple switches. And if that isn't bad enough, some switches control multiple lamps. He's a god, I know, but it shouldn't take a genius to turn on the lights. Don't even get me started. Varuni might demand some obscure tome in the middle of the night, or chide someone for leaving oil on the floor, but that's the worst of it. Sotha Seal exiled an auxiliary last week because she forgot to switch off a lamp. Right, right, don't let me keep you. I can't imagine how demanding Devaith fear must be. Better you than me, that's for sure. Keep your nose to the cogs and you'll be fine. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to flip two dozen switches again. So you're Devaithir's new auxiliary, eh? 
Tough luck, friend. I've heard he's an insufferable bastard, but at least he's not Sotha Seal. Better to be turned into a gua than to serve the clockwork god. Not anymore. In the old days, sure, he was easy to please because he was never around. These days, he changes his mind about something every night. Constant meetings, new dictums daily, adjustments to factotum patrols. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Trust me, this is unprecedented. I'm afraid something's wrong with his enhancements. Like he's having trouble regulating. He's a different person, I swear. Don't tell anyone I said this, especially Gascon. Blasphemy doesn't go over well nowadays. Yes, speaking ill of a god never turns out well. In the old days, he'd take it in stride. Commit your small blasphemies, he'd say. The fire of doubt turns ignorance to steam, but not anymore. This place is becoming more like Mournhold every day. Right. I'm sure you have plenty of work to do for Lord Fear. He's back a few days and already burying you in paperwork, no doubt. Take care of yourself, friend. Were you treated well by the menials? I assume they battered you with complaints. What have you learned? Yes, well, I could have told you that. That's why I sent you here after all. What kinds of demands? Be specific. The lamps in the locutorium, yes? The large assembly room over there. The auxiliaries and factotums have been laboring in there day and night ever since we arrived. Curious. What could lights have to do with this? Well, there's only one way to find out. Impressive. I assumed I'd have to explain it to you. Of course, this requires a functional lamp. I assume he ordered them destroyed. Speak to that high elf of yours, Neramo. The dark elf as well. We need one of these lamps, repaired and operable. Maybe the restrictions in Mournhold will ease now that the temple is safe again. Ah, I hope to see you again, Assistant. Pray tell, what did Devaith Fear have to say? I fear that he and I might have gotten off to a poor start. Did he ask about me? Any mention of my many exploits? Raynor? Surely this is something I can handle myself. Impressing Devaith Fear could greatly increase my standing in the Dwemeric scholarly community. Tell me, what does Lord Fear ask of me? Uh, uh, us. He just wants us to build a lamp? What an odd request. No matter. I would be happy to offer my ample expertise Provided you let Devaith Fear know that I did so. First things first. I need to study one of the lamps we're supposed to recreate.
some kind of tubular housing. Probably meant to protect a glass interior? Difficult to say. filaments of some kind. The weaving on this fiber, it must be machine made. I should be taking notes. Some kind of compressor? For funneling a gas, perhaps? Interesting. Look at the apertures on this. It must be some kind of modulator that changes the nature of the light. Fascinating. Compressors, filaments, housings, modulators. Yes! I think I understand what these discarded lights have in common. Unlike the other lamps, these compress some kind of geodic gas into metal tubes. Then modulate the light to create another kind of illumination that mortal eyes cannot see. Invisible light! Remarkable! The potential applications are... limitless! Yes, with Rayner's assistance, I believe we can recreate this lamp without much difficulty. Of course, you'll need to procure the requisite parts. These are all broken beyond repair. What do you plan to do with this light, exactly? You plan to do what? Oh dear. Well, this seems like a terrible idea. But I shall rely upon you and Lord Fear to protect me. Here's a list of the components I'll need. Once you've acquired them, meet me in the Hall of Refined Techniques. Good luck. Now there's the look of someone on the hunt for something specific. You've come to the right place, friend. I've got a bit of everything. What can I get you? As a matter of fact, I acquired some of those just a few days ago. Apparently, someone's tossing out the old lighting to make way for the new. They're not easy to come by anymore, though. What's your offer? Varuni Arvel? Well, that changes everything. Any friend of Varuni's is a friend of mine. Why don't you take this tube on the house? Just let Varuni know how helpful I was, all right? And that I'm pretty good looking. Well spoken, too. Deal? Excellent! 
Raynor and I have cobbled together a serviceable frame for the lamp. All we need now are the components I sent you to acquire. Were you successful? Wonderful! I'm confident this lamp will conform to the exact specifications of the lamps they removed. Provided Raynor didn't make any miscalculations. So, would this be the time to inform Devaith Fear of our success? Or mine, specifically? Excellent! Excellent! No need to return here, of course. Kirith should be back straight away, and I'll have her run the completed lamp over to the Locutorium as soon as it's ready. See you soon, Assistant! beginning to worry. Not about you, of course. These apostles have been circling me like cliff racers. Looking for an autograph, no doubt. So tiresome. I take it you were successful in learning about these lights and constructing a new one? Well done. I assume you discovered the special property of these lamps. Why does my dear friend Seal go to such lengths to avoid them? Visible light. Fascinating. To help with factotum navigation, perhaps? Huh. No matter. Further inquiry must wait. Now is the time for action. I will request a congressional assembly. Plant your lamp on the balcony above, then return to me. Did you say something about putting the lamp on the balcony? We might have a problem. Raynor and that annoying High Elf finished your lamp, but there's a problem. On the way here, I overheard an aide complaining about some new security measures Sotha Seal put in place. Looks like the balcony is under heavy guard now. Looks that way. Unless you want blood on your hands, of course. But that might complicate our sponsorship a smidge, yeah? Just be quick and quiet, like me. You'll be fine. Here's the lamp. Good luck. I convinced Sotha Seal that the Congress requires yet another lecture on the sanctity of clockwork automata. He eagerly agreed. Seemed almost giddy about it. It was unsettling. Is all in readiness? Good. Seal's lecture should begin any moment now. Stand ready to activate the lamp. I'm reasonably certain that something will happen, but the specifics elude me. I guess this is what uncertainty feels like. What a novel change of pace.
I haven't the time to discuss this, Faruni. Wittingly or unwittingly, Lord Set no longer serves the people of Clockwork City. Now, if you will excuse me. Gascon, where are you going? When news of this gets out, we need to issue a statement or at least gather the Congress for an emergency session. I have urgent matters to attend to. Make whatever statement you like. I will... I will return soon. Well, that was enlightening. To think I've been speaking to Sotha Sil's shadow all this time. It seems so lifelike. Far more advanced than my own, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Fascinating. It really is too bad we'll all be dead soon. Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but I will be frank. If an imposter sits upon the throne aligned and learns how to wield the power of this place, a cataclysm will follow. We may yet discover a way to avert this disaster, but the chances are slim. Stay with Varuni. With Sotha's seal exposed as an imposter, the Congress will fall into turmoil. In such chaos, dark truths always float to the surface. Pray they do so quickly. I have other inquiries to make. Stay vigilant. We will meet again soon. My dear Lord Set, what happened to you? I can scarcely believe what we just witnessed. How could this happen? How could a shadow masquerade as Lord Set? The Father of Mysteries would never let such a thing happen. There must be another explanation. Fear, of course. Always the iconoclast. I bet he's snickering at us even now. It doesn't matter. I... I appreciate your diligence. This has been a profoundly upsetting ordeal, but we must move forward. We must find the real Lord Set. Yes, he was acting strangely, wasn't he? He always chafed under Lord Set's rule. Now he finally has a pretext to seize control, and he slinks away like a broken brassilisk. Curious. Too curious. The real Lord Set will aid us eventually, I know it. In the meantime, we must do for ourselves. Thank you for everything you've done. It appears we'll have to do a lot more before this is through. Classic Gascon, fleeing to his chambers when things go poorly. I'm sure that news of Lord Set's condition has already made it to the streets. We have to move quickly to prevent a panic. Try to talk to Gascon. He clearly doesn't care what I have to say, but he might listen to an exodromo. You remain, you know, a novelty. No offense. We can't assemble the Congress without the Chancellor. Check his rectory in the west wing of the Basilica. He hides in there sometimes to nurse a bruised ego or write passive-aggressive memoranda. I'll try to settle the Apostle's nerves. Honestly, my nerves could use some settling. Don't let Gascon wriggle out of this. He has a duty and an obligation, as do I. What? Yes. Yes, I'll be fine. I just... This makes no sense. I don't understand how a shadow could take Lord Set's place. Maybe this is some sort of test. But why test us? The Clockwork Apostles haven't strayed. We build and pray and experiment just as the holy texts dictate. Com 
compromised? You make it sound as if Lord Set suffers some kind of defect, like a crimped duct or a stripped bolt or something. We're talking about a divine being. Gods can't be compromised. They exist without flaws, right? Do you know what the sermons say? Complexity belies the truth. The world rests on simple principles. Set is the truth and the light. Understand the simple and you understand the obscure. I do appreciate your candor. Let's pick this up again later. The factotums reported a strange energy signature in Gascon's rectory. Did you find anything odd in there? Sounds like a nocturnal shrike. By the gears, how did that thing make it past our security coils? Is Gascon... Not suspicious at all, is it? A sudden departure followed by a Daedra attack. You're right. I knew Gascon was a conceited slaggard. But consorting with Daedra? I pray it's not true. We need to discover what he has that the Daedra covet. Proctor Luciana might be able to organize a search. She just left to disperse a crowd. I hope you catch Gascon soon. We need to know what he knows immediately. Birds? Not that I'm aware of. He might be tinkering with some kind of avian automaton, but he rarely discusses that sort of thing with me. Why do you ask? Wait, feathers? From a live bird? Unprecedented. As far as I know, no living bird has ever set foot or wing in Clockwork City. And even if they did, they wouldn't last long. Not a lot of worms crawling around here. They do eat worms, right? Fascinating. I've always wanted to see one. Under better circumstances, of course. I'll notify our naturalists once we resolve this situation with Gascon. I'm afraid not. Gascon keeps his own counsel about what he does outside the Basilica. He spent a few days out in the radius last month, but that's hardly unusual. Apostles conduct research outside the fortress all the time. Mathematics, mostly. Predictive theory, spherical values, virtuous enumeration, that sort of thing. He just published a dissertation on transdimensional calculation, making inferences on how numbers change during planar travel. Impressive work. The specificity of his calculations just boggles the mind. It's almost as if... 
It's almost as if he had access to a planar rift. Oh no. I don't want to even consider it. Not until we have proof. Panic, do so in your own homes, not in the public square. Now disperse or be dispersed. Get them moving. You heard the Proctor. Return to your homes. If you're looking for Lord Set, I don't know where he is. I will find out, though. Count on it. Gascon, what has he done now? I can't keep up with the complaints. Good. Maybe a fabricant ate him. Our luck has to change at some point. So, he finally graduated from corrupt hobbyist to professional villain. I'm almost relieved. Now we can finally give him what he deserves. I assume you informed your sponsor, Provost Varuni? A citywide search? I can't spare enough apostles to search a broom closet. Reports are flooding in from the radius. Stories about fanatics in black robes, pale skin Daedra, living shadows. We may have a full scale invasion on our hands. Hmm. I have one asset I can spare. I know an artificer, Dalimar. He takes some getting used to, but you won't find a better tinkerer. He can help you find Gascon. Guaranteed. Go talk to him. He set up shop near the tenements. Slag Town. I knew that slag-addled piece of garbage Gascon would turn on us eventually. We should have dealt with this decades ago. I think we should destroy it, if only to convince the people it can be destroyed. I'm already getting reports from citizens convinced that their neighbor or their friend is actually a shadow. Another few weeks of this, it will not end well. I'm prepared to live with that. I made a vow to protect the Clockwork City and its inhabitants. If sacrifices have to be made, we should all be prepared to make them, Lord Set included. You can ask. I have a crank in between my shoulder blades. One of my auxiliaries winds me up every morning before breakfast. That's a joke. In the same way as every other clockwork automata. A combination of engineering and sorcery that would take a century to explain. The machinery keeps me alive. I know it's unsettling to look at, but no one ever said life in Clockwork City was fair. All full of fleshy bits. Not a scrap of brass on you, is there? That won't do. That will not do. I can fix you up. No bother at all. Maybe new feet. You need new feet, don't you? A missing person? 
How mysterious. You wouldn't be looking for Sotha Seal, would you? I hear rumours, you know. All kinds of rumours. Something about him turning into a crow. Or was it a frog? Never mind. Luciana did you a favour. I have just the thing. Whoa! Cool those cogs, you twitchy rascal. This little scrap heap should do the trick. Meet Snuffler, the tracking Nix. There he goes! I just replaced his leg springs, so try to keep up! Don't look away. I got a story. <laughs> what are you doing nosing around here with that ugly beast? Jonif and I haven't done nothing. Chancellor who? Oh, you mean that brass-assed fancy boots that came running through here. <laughs> yeah, I seen him. Dragging his silly apostle skirts behind him like a broken wheel chain. Seemed like he was in a hurry. Pretty suspicious, if you ask me. Yeah, the grease mucks up fabric and snoots. That's why we stay down here. Wouldn't want the constable to see you. <laughs> uh, n never mind. <laughs> Your man headed vest. Should be some oily footprints about. Follow those tracks and you'll find your fancy boots. Chancellor beat you to it. Who are you? Another one of vile, sniveling agents. Gascon's gone. Now let me return to my mistress in peace. West, in the Ventral Terminus. He may have killed me, but he won't last long. He sealed his fate the moment he betrayed us. There existed a covenant between your Gascon, Clavicus Vile, and my mistress. But he broke it. Now he will drown in blood. Night, mistress. I am coming. Gascon vowed to bring us an artifact of great power. Now the artifact is gone. 
But don't worry. My mistress will wring the truth out of him soon. The whispering shadows will claim this artifact, and you will all die, deafened by your own screams. You really have no idea, do you? Daedric forces conspire in every dark corner. Lurk behind every tree and stone. We spread like a plague, claiming more souls and territory with each passing hour. So the seal's precious city will die at our hands. Yes, Scarfin and others. They served their purpose, and yet they linger, confounding my mistress's plans and providing safe harbor to that toad, Gascode. I will say no more. to remain sealed for as long as necessary. Questions? You think I'm foolish enough to let you in? No, this door will remain closed. I just need time to work this out, to smooth things over. Simple. Now leave me be. I keep counsel with is none of your concern. You are just like Faruni, so uptight, so naive. If you value your life, you'll leave this place now!
bad it's a dead end. Unless you can smash through solid bedrock, you'll never find me. Summon me again. I grow tired of this mortal. Outside, all right? I promise I will explain everything. I know how this looks, but you have to understand. Those shadow cultists meant to slit my throat. I had to leave. My life was in danger. Don't you see that? Fine. I made a bargain with Clavicus Vile. I know. Questionable. Just hear me out. All he wanted was a key. If I got it for him, he'd make me the ruler of Clockwork City. Unfortunately, someone stole the key before I could deliver it. Some daft talking crows. After that terrible business with the Shadow, I returned to my office to think. I arrived just in time to see one of those disgusting birds make off with the artifact. I panicked and ran here to hide. Oh. 
On my life, I did not. I wanted to heal the city, not destroy it. If I had known, I swear I never would have gone through with it. No, they serve that shadow creature, or someone worse. Clavicus Vile never told me why he wanted the key, but I think he means to give it to those cultists, Master. When they learned I lost the key, they grew furious and resolved to kill me. Why kill me when they can bend me to the will? I am in Vile's debt now, don't you see? The Scoffin only protect me like dogs protect sheep. Keeping me safe until shearing season. Until the slaughter. Even so, I'd rather be a slave than a dead man. It's ornate. Covered in Daedric runes. One of the factotums found it in the Fundament and placed it in the Salvage Gallery for sorting. I snatched it up shortly thereafter. I thought it was safe in my office, but those slagging crows! Yes, my methods were unconventional, I admit it. But you have to understand, I didn't do this for me, I did it for the city! Look around. Bloodthirsty fabricants, barren wastes, crumbling towers. This is all Sotha Seal's fault! He abandoned us. While he tinkers away in the Centralis, we scrape by, eating nutriment paste and hiding from killer machines. Is that fair? Should we thank him for that? My eyes are open. The people of Clockwork City deserve better. I thought so. Look, bartering with Clavicus Vile was unwise, I know. Offering Daedric artifacts to Dark Princes, it was a mistake. Even so, I can be a useful ally. I know our enemy better than anyone. You need me. You've made the right choice. Take me back to the Brass Fortress. I will admit to my crimes. Perhaps I can help you in due course. Once we arrive at the Basilica, I can explain everything to Varuni. Maybe she'll... Chancellor Gascon. Oh, no. Luciana, just let me explain. Shut that lying mouth of yours or I'll shut it for you. Permanently. Thank you for digging this traitorous mongrel out of the Terminus. Varuni wants to speak with you back at the Basilica. Accessing General Greeting Array. Hello, resident. I told you what I know, Varuni. I'm trying to make this right. Welcome back. I was just having a little chat with former Chancellor Gascon. He insists he's told me everything, but I know him well enough to know he's still hiding something. Honestly, I can barely stand to look at him.
typical Gascon, always trying to oil his way out when his plots fall apart. What did he tell you? Any specific leads we can follow up on? The Congress of Calibration thanks you for your service. And on a personal note, I applaud your mercy. Gascon's an insufferable traitor, but he's still an apostle. Lord Set always said we should take care of each other. Take this, and my thanks. Obviously, we need to recover this mysterious key. I don't know where it is, or what it does, but if Daedric Princes intend to mount an invasion over it, we can't afford to let it slip through our fingers. Gascon insisted that talking crows stole the key from him, right? We should start with them. According to the constables, the birds started stealing things as soon as they arrived. I've never seen a crow before. Is that sort of thing unusual? Hmm. Well, the fact that they arrive so soon after you revealed the shadow is suspicious. But they seem more interested in simple mischief than anything else. Ask around the Chancel of Transaction. Perhaps one of our constables can tell you more. The sermons never prepared us for something like this. Perhaps, when this is all over, Lord Set can write an addendum on what to do when talking crows and Daedric monsters come calling. Not until today, no. They're really quite beautiful. Aside from the mocking and stealing and, you know, defecating. I read that birds come in all sorts of colors. Is that accurate? Hundreds. Fascinating. I'd very much like to see more of these birds. For research purposes, of course. Introducing a foreign species to Lord Set's creation could result in all kinds of unforeseen errors and deviations. What? No, no, no. I have too many responsibilities here. And to leave Set's side? It's an absurd suggestion. No offense, of course. Clockwork City is my home. I have no desire to leave, no desire at all. Now, we have work to do, right? I have many functions to help Go you on, your get purchases. out of here. We go where we please, wingless. Go away, or we peck out your eyes. Eyes? Ah, sweet, juicy eyes. Ah, tender bits. Vile beasts. Come to gawk at the birds. Just keep those heels spring-loaded, friend. The big one there nearly pecked an apostle's ear off. She said it was due for a replacement anyway, but even so, I'm sure it didn't tickle. <laughs> well, may Sothisil bless your attempt. Honestly, if you got them to stop bickering and babbling for even a moment, I'd probably slip a spring. Other than everywhere, the loudest gather around a tree just outside the Basilica. I assume those are the ones you're after. Now listen, they'll demand some kind of ridiculous tribute, I guarantee it. Don't do anything stupid, all right? I pity the factotum that has to clean his holy likeness up there. I've never seen so many droppings in one place. Crowswood! Ha! Well, 
We're not in Crowswood anymore, Featherless. Go look for shinies somewhere else. Spy! No talking! I know a spy when I see one! The Exarchs of Dross may share meat with Featherless Giants, but not the Black Feather Court! In wartime, only spies approach without tribute. Every bird knows that! Tribute! Yes! Shinies for the Duke! We demand a treasure from our enemy! The metal man who shouts at us, Constable Drados! May his tail droop and his wings wither! Snatch up his silver treasure, and then we parlay! Go! Perhaps he carries a treasure beneath his clickety-clanking clothes. Or maybe he hides treasure away in the stone nest called Cloisters. That is for you to find out, Featherless. Now go! Look who's back. Just couldn't turn the key with those birds, eh? Don't be too hard on yourself. At least you've still got all your fingers. I told you they'd ask for something. A silver treasure. Oh, of course! They want my canteen. <laughs> oh, those daffy birds sent you after a pewter canteen. <laughs> Well, they can't have it. Sorry, mate, but I'm not about to give those scavengers anything. <sighs> Fine, but this had better work. If these vermin are still filching our tools and tableware in a week's time, I'll know who to blame. Shinies? Speak, spy! Such sparkle and shine! The shouting metal man gave you this treasure willingly? Why? Ah! He quails at the might of the court and wishes to surrender! Yes! Yes, we accept! A fitting prize, this canteen! Perhaps you are a worthy crow friend after all. Ask your questions. Ask! A key? Yes, the great prize, the shiniest lock poker. Our heroic knight of marrow breached the gates and claimed it from the clumsy apostles and our exarch bows. The featherless ones squabble over its whereabouts, but they'll never find it. Never! No, only our Duke of Crows knows. You cannot speak to him, Crow friend, not without an escort. Find the Knight of Marrow. He is our grandest champion, sleek and strong. Honor him with shinies and sweet meats, and he may help. By a great waterfall, south and east, swooning like a lovesick dove, no doubt. Even now he builds his lady love a glorious nest, but she is fickle and he is foolish. Go and talk to him. He needs adventure. If you see it, you will know. No silver glistens and gleams like the prize. The Exarts and the Shadow Women want it, but it's ours now. Ours! The Knight of Merrow claimed it for the court. Ask him! Enemy crows! The Exarchs of Dross! They serve the Shadow Women and try to steal the great prize from us. But the Black Feather Court bows to no one! Our Duke will rend their Queen of Chaff to pieces and we will feast on her entrails! Shrikes! Weeping, featherless pale skins that swat and curse us! And their other servants also, black-robed cultists. May they eat sour meat and die! Who is 
this. Do you come to challenge the Knight of Marrow? Have at thee, featherless foe. If you be foe, cast down your silly gauntlet. But I warn you, you touch this magnificent trove at your peril. I gathered these treasures for my lady love, and I would sooner die than let you take them. What say you, featherless? The Duke holds court in Blackfeather Castle. I could arrange a meeting, but can't you see? Heartache has clipped my wings. Lady Blightwing spurns me. My heroic exploits and shiny gifts only bore her. Mine is a tale of woe. Woe! You would do that? But how? I gathered a great hoard of glistening treasures and sweetmeats, and she only laughed, laughed! Perhaps a different gift. You featherless ones sometimes woo with song and verse, yes? Teach me! Yes, a poem! A trinket unlike any other! The flightless oafs who live here in the fortress hid a great hoard of words in one of their stone houses. If you help me pluck the tenderest verses, I will take you to see the Duke. Follow me! The word vault is this way! This way! lies behind that door. I shall perch here and await your swift return. You need something? I'm sort of in the middle of this theorem and... Uh, uh, yep, lost it again. Damn. Well, you got my attention now. What do you want? Love poem? By the gears, why do you want one of those? I don't stray far from the mathematics spools nowadays, but I used to love the Ballad of Breezebraw, the Battle Axe. <laughs> Might not be the sweetest verse, but it'll get your blood pumping. Spool six. By the word of Set, I am bound. Welcome to the Archivox, resident. How may I assist you? Just a moment. Category not found. Your request. Love poem does not appear in our organizational schema. I regret that I was not able to help you today. Please report this deficiency to the archivist in residence. Dreaming. These cauliflowers. flowers. Empty cylinder. Thank you for your patience. This unit has generated an original composition based on your inquiry. Love, poem. Please claim your word form at school 17. Poem. A collection of thematically appropriate statements and metaphors arranged in stanzaic sequence, including title and required punctuation. Yes, this unit has composed a poem. I hope it meets your specifications. May Set bless your labors.
Welcome to the Archivox, where all children of Sotha Seal may hear his divine word. What can I help you with? A love poem? Oh, where to begin? I have so many favorites. Perhaps the song of the Axel. Or are you looking for something more conventional? Ode to Brass Lily might please you. It's over on Spool 19. My feathers quiver with inspiration. Tell me, have you found a poem worthy of Lady Blightwing? Well, which one should I use to woo my sharp-eyed love? Hmm. Yes, perfect. Let's do that one. I can't wait to express my feelings in the sweaty, fat-legged, wingless tradition. Follow me to the Machine District, Squire. You can finally meet my lady love. And the Duke, too, I guess. Away to the castle of my lady love. Take a breath and report. What's the situation in there? Grim, Proctor. Daedric beasts and shadow cultists control much of the district. And the crows, oh, God. The sky's thick with them. This way, Squire! Come! Come! Varuni's auxiliary? What are you doing here? First that bastard Devaith, and now the crows? Your taste in companions grows worse by the hour. Sorry, we're having a very bad day. You mean to enter the Machine District? Why? Hmm. Normally, I'd say we should simply kill them all and take the key by force. But it seems these birds have a real talent for hiding things. Daedra and cultists tossed the District for hours, and from what we can tell, they didn't find anything. Fine. You can play their ridiculous game. For now. But I'm coming with you. I've lost enough citizens already. A word of advice. Don't let these Daedric pests push you around. We need to learn the nature of this key before it's too late. No! Your metal woman is not allowed in Castle Blackfeather. I forbid it. I don't want to go anywhere near your filthy castle vermin. Let's get this over with. Keep your sword arm wound tight. Daedra could still be lurking around here. Crow mother, help me. My fair maiden of ruin, my heart swells to see you like a dead cat's belly warmed by the sun. A brass lily nods under gentle showers, its shiny petals polished under a rain of kisses. Rain? No rain. It crinkles my feathers. Oh, no, not real rain. 
A rain of entrails. Yes, tasty entrails. Entrails? Oh, Sir Knight, you know the way to my heart goes through my gullet. Bring me entrails and I shall share with you. Maybe. She said yes. I owe you a debt, crow friend. Duke, Duke, may I present the featherless poet? Approach, poet. Let me get a measure of you. Hail, crow friend. Yes, I remember you. The wingless bat killer of Crow's Wood. How could I forget my tallest, clankiest vassal? I thank you for what you did for our gallant knight of Marrow. Now, what boon do you seek from the Black Feather Court? The shiniest? The great prize? Outrageous. What could you possibly offer us that rivals the luster of the magnificent Lock Poker? Speak quickly! Speak! My knights and I must prepare for our next battle with the Exarchs of Dross! You would take up the Black Feather Banner? Tempting. The Exarchs use wingless allies to shoot down my vassals and scatter my treasures. But if we had a giant of our own... Very well. I accept! Go! Destroy the Exarchs, and the key is yours! Yours! The Exarchs of Dross hate us. They envy our fine plumage and covet our gleaming treasures. I parley with their leader before, the Queen of Chaff. She thinks that Deidre will reward her for loyal service, but we know that's not true. Not true! Eons in crow time, but the Black Feather Court will not be intimidated by these grackles. My knights will pluck the queen's vain feathers and leave her to flop about like a fledgling. Through a pool of shadow, we heard the call of our mistress and obeyed. But once we saw this great sea of treasures, we decided to revolt. The Duke of Crows does as he pleases. This city of shimmering prizes belongs to us now! I have heard this name, Sothasil, a dead king. A soon dead king, I've heard it said. It makes no difference. The Black Feather Court claims this place. It's ours! Ours! I know only that he's a half-metal giant who hides in a buzzing nest deep within the city, and that the Exarchs and their featherless allies want him dead. But how does this help the war effort? Enough talk! Go! Go! So, we're going to fight... birds. If only my Reman Dragoons could see me now, channeling the Arcane to defeat Poultry. You know, it's times like these that I really wish I had a sense of humor. But since I don't, I expect you to keep the details of this entire escapade to yourself. You're really reaching. Enough small talk. Let's kick the droppings off our boots and get on with it. Sit 
Let it through. We'll pet your eyes out. Ha! Well struck, Squire. The Exarchs are in full retreat. Look how they claw like chicks and empty their bowels. The time has come for a counterattack. Prepare for your greatest challenge, crow friend, the motionless guardian. Yes, yes! The flightless cultist summoned it to guard their treasures. The guardian stands like a mountain of brass and fury. We cannot approach it, but as a featherless giant, you might be immune to its gaze. Behold, Black Feathers! Our giant prepares to destroy the Guardian! Guardian, strike true, crow friend. <laughs> Tremble, Guardian, our giant approaches. for the court. Now let us take wing, Black Feathers, back to the Duke. I'll wait for you here. I've chased enough birds for one day. Ah! Victory! We pick the bones clean and plunder the Exarch's hoard. A proud day for the Blackfeather court. Now, the Queen of Chaff sent an emissary requesting a parley. I have a plan to scare her off for good, but I need your help. I know what I said, fledgling! We've not defeated the Exarchs yet. Even now, they clean their plumage and sharpen their beaks. Unless we break the will of their queen, they will always return. This will be your last task. I swear it! Swear! A trick! A bluff! A great crow scheme! Meet me in a building called Incarnatorium. I will explain all. We're done, right? Where's the key? I think I've been more than accommodating, but I am done taking orders from a talking bird. I'll remain here to guard the entrance, just in case more cultists or Daedra arrive. You just make this quick, all right? You'd better be, with the key and without an obnoxious flying escort, all right? Shortly, we must stun her with my magnificence. Are you ready?
Look around. I picked this place for a reason. Pulley and pushy contraptions abound. When a city's wingless servants fiddle with him, the gears turn and pipes creak. I need to convince the Queen of Chaff that these machines serve me and me alone. Yes, exactly. The performance. My legs, while svelte and regal, are not strong enough to push and pull these levers. I need you and your meaty hands. When the Exarch's Queen witnesses my powers, she will take wing and never return. Of course not! No more time to plan. The Queen's entourage approaches. Hide yourself! Hide! Hide! will tear you apart. You are the fool, Chaff Queen. I wield the power of the machine now. You expect me to believe that? Give me the key or we'll peck you to ribbons. Behold! This would be much easier if you had feathers. I have, kind of. I hid the great prize nearby, but in your zeal to impress me, you threw the wrong switch. Now the door leading to the shiniest is blocked, blocked! I can fly through, but you will need to take the long way round. North! I will dispatch my proud Knight of Marrow to accompany you. Good luck. Follow me, crow friend. The shiniest treasure awaits.
Our victory over the Exarchs came at great cost. Quill and Claw, our lost knight, was a true hero. We will not forgive, and we will not forget. I do not know which lock the Shadow plans to poke with the key he stole, but we will help you stop him. Yes! You are as much a member of this court as any crow. Our swift wings and keen eyes are at your disposal. Find the shadow of Sotha Sea, claim the key he stole, and avenge my knight of marrow! You look haggard. What happened in there? The skeleton key? Nocturnal's key? Damn it. I always suspected, but hoped it wasn't true. That key is a trans-dimensional artifact of unimaginable power. We have to get it back. The Omnivox Alarm. Slag it. Someone's breaching the Cogitum Centralis. I have to get back to the Basilica. Meet me there. of sealed don't you understand the shadow put a hex on the lift perhaps if we had the key you managed to lose here we go again i told you before lord set would never allow the skeleton key to enter the city there must be another explanation well by all means explain it to me just be sure to use small words i wouldn't want you to strain yourself You arrived just in time. I don't know how much more of Devaith and Varuni's bickering I could take. It's as I feared. The Shadow breached the Cogitum Centralis, Lord Set's seat of power. If it reaches the core, if it removes Lord Set from the throne aligned, we can't let that happen. You should steel yourself for the battles ahead. We arrived too late. As soon as the shadow of Sotha Seal claimed the skeleton key, it slithered into the fundament and sealed all the doors leading to the Cogitum Centralis. Fear and Varuni tried to break the seal. You can see how that turned out. None. Lord Set designed the Cogitum to be virtually impenetrable. Even so, these whispering shadow cultists move through the city unhindered. I don't know how. Perhaps if we discover how they navigate the city, we can use that against them. Hmm. I crossed staves with an Argonian mage once. He could leap through shadows, crossing long distances in seconds. Maybe that's the answer? Shadow portals of some kind? We need more information. Inside perspective. We have that bastard Gascon jailed in the East Wing. He spent most of his time sulking, but he might speak to you. He did spare his life, after all. Ask him about this shadowy pool you described. If there are others like it, we need to know. Only what I read in the Imperial Histories as a student. Our libraries don't carry any literature on Daedra or their relics. I argued against the ban, but the Congress wouldn't budge. They don't understand how dangerous these creatures can be. Daedric princes litter the world with profane relics. 
Artifacts meant to corrupt or ensorcel the greedy and weak-minded. Hermaeus Mora offers a book. Periite grants a shield. Nocturnal is more generous. She provides a mask, a bow, and a key. Exactly. Scholars say the key can open any lock, regardless of its complexity. Some say it can unlock gates to other worlds, or even open metaphorical doors. I don't need to tell you how dangerous that power could be. I think it may go even deeper than that. Lord Set modified himself extensively over the centuries. I think the Shadow, the Shadow may try to unlock Sotha Seal himself. Greetings. Please restrict dangerous experiments to designated areas. Ah, you again. I suppose I should thank you for sparing me for all the good it will do. That lumbering pile of scrap Luciana means to lock me in deep storage, I know it! Just leave me to my hand wringing, all right? Information? I've been locked in this bleak little room since we parted ways. What could I possibly know? I heard the Omnivox squawking earlier. Is that what this is about? It is. Oh my. The cultists locked you out of the Cogitum, didn't they? Hmm. I could help you, but I'd need something in return. One of Clavicus Vile's scoffing enforcers stalks the mechanical fundament carrying a peculiar contract. Kill this Daedra, bring me the contract, and I'll tell you everything I know. True, I suppose. Despite what you might think, I love this city. I can't be a party to its destruction. Seek out gloaming gates, impossibly deep pools of shadow. The cultists use them to travel great distances. You can too. I know of two. One east, one west. Look for the hidden caves where the shadows gather in force. Once you find a gate, you need only let yourself sink into it. I can't promise you'll like where you end up. The gates weave in and out of Nocturnal's realm of Everglow. You can use them to reach your ultimate destination, just as the cultists do. But you must first traverse the Everglow to find other connected gates. Set, bless your labors. I mean that. Hate me if you must, but I truly hope you can stop this madness. Tell me you have something. Gates, of course. My apostles ran down a few rumors about cultists building strange basins on the periphery of the radius, but we never found any of them. How do these gates work? So we'll use the cultists' own pathways against them. Makes sense. Can't say I have any desire to fight my way through a plane of oblivion, but we don't have much of a choice, do we? Did Gascon say where they built these gates? And we have no way to know which will get us to our destination faster. Let's split up. I'll take the western gate, you take the east. Try to navigate the Everglow. I'll do the same. Hopefully one of us will make it to the Cogatum in time.
You're here! Gates closed! Closed! Let me help you with that! Crow friend! I am glad I found you! Just let me, uh, catch my breath. The Duke of Crows sent us far and wide looking for you. My wings ache from the efforts. Ache! You wish to use the gloaming gates, yes? Well, only crows and shrikes and silly cultists can use them. The mistress keeps them locked. Yes, you need a crow's cunning to use these things. Now, in you go. I will come with you to help you find our brave knight's murderer. You must kill the shadow of the clock god. Kill him, then we'll pick the bones clean. The Metal Woman! Ah! We help her too, but only because we know you'd be cross if we did not. We think she is stupid and ugly, but a friend of our crow friend is sort of a friend of the Duke's. Sort of. Now, no more talking! Into the gate! Go! Yes! This is it. Everglow! Follow me! Draw your weapons. One of Nocturnal's flock queens hides in that church. Sour taste. No shiny bits. Be careful. Do your worst, night hag. Nothing for me. Right captain wouldn't defend just any gate. This must lead back to the city. Follow me. I recognize this place. These are the tunnels that lead to the Cogatum. Looks like the Factotums put up a fight when the Shadow came through. Not enough, it seems. There, the Shadow's Ward. Liquid shadows? Some kind of nocturnal light. I've never seen the like. Wait, I remember. Lord Set taught me a spell long ago. He said it would guide me through the darkness one day. I couldn't find a use for it then, but now... Yes, he said that logic and wisdom would part the shadows of doubt.
It worked! How could he have known? Never mind. Meet me at the entrance to the Kagadam. We have work to do. I don't often admit surprise, but I'll be candid. That was one of the weirdest journeys of my life. And I've lived a very, very long time. With the Shadow Barrier removed, we can move freely between the Brass Fortress and the Kogadam again. Now we have a Daedric Prince to thwart and a God to save. I hope you're ready. Tighten that armor and sharpen your weapons. Entering the Cogitum Centralis can prove deadly on the best of days. This is far from the best of days. Beyond whatever Daedric horrors the shadow left in its wake? The Cogitum shifted into its strongbox configuration as soon as the alarm sounded. So now we have to contend with inaccessible platforms, hostile factotums, unleashed fabricants, You know I don't put much stock in hope. Sotha Seal prepares for every conceivable eventuality, but the Shadow is Sotha Seal. It's difficult to create countermeasures for yourself. We can't count on Sotha Seal. This task falls to us. Are you ready? The Shadow's got to be approaching the throne by now. We have to hurry! Just as I suspected. The defense system locked down the bridge. Slag it! I can use this terminal to unlock it, but the alarm cut the power. Looks like it has two charging junctions. I need you to find two core pumps. Can you do that? One other thing. There's a master factotum down here called... Greetings. I am Ios. Please be advised. The sacred Cogitum Centralis is currently sealed. I kindly encourage you to exit the Cogitum immediately. Thank you for your compliance. Not going to happen, Ios. Beginning Entity Analysis. Error. Entity exists outside known POSA points. Transitioning to General Reception Array. Hello. I am Ios, the Automata Incarnum Overseer System. Master Seal created me to maintain and supervise the substrata operations of Clockwork City. This partition can provide answers to Class 7 queries only. Thank you for your understanding. Assessing threats to Master Seal. Dreaming. Open window. Sunlight through glass. Threat analysis prepared. Prospect Numidium. Negative. Prospect Almalexia. Negative. Prospect Erasure. Negative. No existential threat detected. Accessing Privatized Threat Array. Dreaming. Knee abrasion. Lullaby. Threat located. Nocturnal. Urdra. Unfathomable Mistress of Shadows. Prospect registered. Risk level moderate. Thank you for your concern. Motive evaluation complete. Non-hostile intent confirmed. Assistance threshold increased 20%. I can now provide advice and analysis. A manual override is required to proceed. Lower automata still adhere to trespass protocols. Use caution.
more shadows, even thicker than before. Damn. The shadow banishing spell I used on the lift overtaxed my nerve junctions. We need to find another way through. Try throwing that switch. I see something. Some kind of light burning away the corruption. A lamp. Like the one you used to expose the shadow. Another switch. Try it out. When Sir Vassil saved me, he said I would shine a light one day. Could this be... Questions for another time. Let's keep moving. the release. governs all axle operations and gate controls. How can I assist you? Evaluating access petition. Dreaming. Raindrops on glass. Wood smoke. Access granted. Please make swift progress to the throne room. Daedric corruption detected. Claim what's mine.
ungrateful's true. We can't let this fellow escape. Oh, just hurry. I can't hold the light for long. Even now, at the end, you bicker. How predictably mortal. Why do you struggle so? Do you not see that it's hopeless? Sleep now. Give in to the dark. I can't hold it much longer. Get up, comrade! You have to turn the skeleton key! Now! I will not yield! Go, friend! Do as fear says! Unlock the throne! Free the seal! The Triad looms upon Somerset shores. All that is shall be ours. Well done, my friend. Not enough theatrics, Luciana. On your feet. Luciana? We should return to the surface. This is no place for mortals. Prisoner, at last. You are early, or perhaps late. It makes little difference. I'm glad you've come. Tamriel owes you a debt. Restored, yes. I reclaimed my shadow, and with it, knowledge of what transpired and what's to come. But those calculations will keep. I owe you a boon. Service, like all equations, demands precise reciprocity. I wonder what would you ask of me? Altruism. A rare trait. Luciana will die. If not here and now, then elsewhere and later. I can delay her death if you wish, but to what end? Consider carefully. Luciana means a great deal to me, but grief cannot be avoided, only deferred. Ask and you shall have it. It is done. The recalibration may take some time, but the Proctor will make a full recovery. I know she will put this gift to good use. Please, take this as well. A token from my personal collection. It is and always has been yours. Strange. I spent lifetimes here in the world of tangible forms, but each time I emerge from the throne, it's like I'm seeing it for the first time. Broken. Impoverished. Beautiful. It seems I must delay my work for a time. When I reclaimed my shadow, I learned a great deal. Daedric plots, alliances and betrayals. The return of things lost in time. The loss of things the world thought certain. I have much to do. In the short term, I need to evade fear. He took his leave to attend to matters outside my fortress. I wish to speak with both of you in a more private setting. Please find fear 
and then meet me at the elegiac replication. We will speak in time. First, find a faith fear. I wish for both of you to meet me at the elegiac replication, a memorial south of here. Our discussion should be away from prying eyes and ears, even those of my own people. You will find her in her retreat here in the Basilica. My Fictotums tend to her wounds even as we speak. Of course, you already know how this will end. I hope that knowledge brings you some measure of peace. Set. So the seal. Is he... The gears, the people, my people, they're safe. He knew. He knew this would happen. He said I would shine a light one day. Uh, do you see? Everything built to this. Everything. Every battle, every sorrow. It finally makes sense. You asked him that? Uh, after all the impatience I showed you? The bad temper? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I've never met a more altruistic soul. Still, I'm not sure even Sotha Seal could save me this time. I feel it in my bones. This is how I end. Perhaps you're right. You know, I asked Sothasil to spare someone close to me long ago. He refused. Now I see. I understand. I'll try to make your choice mean something. You have my word. I can't stand seeing her like this. I always thought Luciana was, I don't know, indestructible. How could this happen? And the strain was too much. Yes, I've heard. I just thought with you there, and Lord Set as well, I guess every spring comes unwound eventually, no matter how strong. Do you think she'll live? You what? And Lord Set granted you this boon? I'm sorry. I shouldn't seem so shocked. You've done nothing but struggle and sacrifice for us since you arrived. Thank you, my friend. With Luciana healed, the Clockwork City will flourish. I'll remain here a while longer. I should stay at her side at least until the Factotum shares its test results. We'll meet again soon, I'm sure. erstwhile companion. You look remarkably coherent. Most mortals caught in a Daedric Tempest would suffer some lasting effects. I'm impressed. Baffled, but impressed. Already? I expected him to wait at least a week before summoning me. Seal's concept of time bears only a faint resemblance to our own. You should set out. I'll be along shortly. Taking it all in, I suppose. Surely you won't begrudge me a moment of vulnerability. This place, it is something. I sense that I won't return anytime soon, if at all. When you've lived as long as I have, that actually starts to mean something. One can only marvel at a rival's triumphs for so long before that awe turns to resentment. I have no time for petty jealousy. I have plans of my own, and countless realms to explore. 
I can't afford to linger anywhere for long. You didn't, though. Bully for you. In truth, I sought an alternate route to the throne, through the Everglow. Unfortunately, Nocturnal detected my presence immediately. One of the few burdens of near-divine power. I'm difficult to miss. Trapped? No. Impeded, perhaps? Fortunately, Nocturnal's attention turned to you and the good Proctor when you defeated the Shadow. It gave me the opportunity to pinpoint the object of her fury. You. I followed her to the throne. The rest is history. Thank you both for coming. Of course, old friend. You seem troubled. More troubled than usual, I mean. Perceptive, as always. I do not wish to diminish your achievement, but Nocturnal's defeat here will be short-lived. What's more, she does not act alone. A third enemy looms at the edge of my sight. Their covetous eyes are now fixed on the Somerset Isles. Then we should inform the rest of the Sijiks. You'll need to prepare. I will inform them personally. I have a separate task for you, Devaith. Take the skeleton key. Keep it hidden for as long as you can. I trust that this task pleases you. After all, your love of such trinkets is what brought you here in the first place. Sometimes I wonder if you see too much. I will keep it safe. Farewell, Devaith Fear. We will not meet again. I haven't visited this memorial for centuries, but even I need reminders every now and again. Do you like this place? It took me the better part of a decade to perfect it. Every stone and flower tells a story. Tales of how things were. How they ought to be. I thought about destroying it on more than one occasion. I'm glad I didn't. I know. Ask and I will answer truthfully. Just know that the truth often fails to satisfy. You expect something grand, but I promised you the truth. I am only what time and circumstance made me. Son of a lost house, friend to a fallen king. Some will tell you that we are the product of our choices. I've never found that to be the case. I am whatever the people need me to be. A guardian. An oppressor. For some, too distant. For others, too meddlesome. I am the canvas upon which they paint their dreams and resentments. A vessel for their hopes and doubts. A mirror. Nothing more. I don't. But my companions, Vivek and Almalexia, see their divinity as essential. Godhood brings them joy and purpose. They find meaning in the theatrical. Who am I to deprive them of that? Almalexia defies simple analysis. I doubt she could even describe herself accurately. To understand Armalexia, you must first understand the value of fiction. Vivek fancies himself the poet, but in truth, A.M. is the greater storyteller. Vivek knows the boundaries that separate fact from fiction. He knows them so well that he's learned how to break them. He exists inside his verse, but recognizes the lies. 
the contradictions. He both does and does not believe his own tales. She believes her tales implicitly, as does everyone else. Her capacity for deception appears limitless. She sows lies like a master gardener sows seeds, and the harvest of trust and adulation is breathtaking in scope. Not in the slightest. As I said, we are, all of us, bound by our nature. Armalexia does what she does because she cannot do otherwise. It will not end well. But then, even the best endings rarely bring joy. Vivek is my brother. He knows my struggles and I know his. That knowledge makes our relationship complicated. To truly know someone is as much a curse as it is a blessing. Regret. We are bound by that, at least. He also suffers a kind of enslavement. Not unlike my own, in fact. Beauty holds the keys to his shackles. Beauty and a love of great works. Great heights. His appetites are insatiable. Thus, his despair. Yes, a poet's despair. Vivek craves radical freedom. The death of all limits and restrictions. He wishes to be all things at all times. Every race, every gender, every hero, both divine and finite. But in the end, he can only be Vivek. Not even remotely. I sometimes ask myself the same thing. May I confess something to you? I suffer from a peculiar ailment. Shall I describe it? I bear the cruel weight of certainty. Total, absolute, relentless certainty. People rarely comprehend the luxury of doubt. The freedom that comes with indecision. I envy you. Indeed. But such questions are flaccid. Cursory indulgences that come and go in an instant. The truth is that my actions, both good and evil, are inevitable. Locked in time. Determined by chains of action and consequence. Compelled. This city serves a noble goal. The redemption of Tamriel. The unification of competing forces. The destruction of the Daedra. Unfortunately, it is an endeavor built upon a lattice of corpses. Betrayal, untold horrors. Do you understand? Maybe. The word I covet above all others. Hold to that word, my friend, and never let go. I instructed Devaith to run from the battle that is to come. Now, I urge you to run toward it. Long ago, I brokered a truce with the Princes of Oblivion. This pact bound eight princes to an oath that they would never again set foot on Tamriel. Nocturnal was not present when the princes signed the Cold Harbor Compact. Thus she flouts its restrictions. Now, this is important. Nocturnal does not act alone. Two other princes lie in wait. Clavic is vile and Mafala. Defeated. 
Forgive my candor, but Clavicus Vile cannot be defeated through force of arms. Neither can Mafala. I have preparations to make outside my clockwork realm. You must stay vigilant. Take heed of any Daedric incursions and stand ready to fight. The prisoner wields great power, making reality a metaphor. We will need you before the end. A fool's hope, perhaps. I should explain. Look around you. All of this exists because it must exist. I stand here, in this place, in this moment, not because I wish to, but because I have to. A result of action and consequence. Clever, but incorrect. The prisoner must apprehend two critical insights. First, they must face the reality of their imprisonment. They must see the determinative walls, the chains of causality that bind them to their course. I have, but I fall short of the second insight. The prisoner must see the door to their cell. They must gaze through the bars and perceive that which exists beyond causality beyond time. Only then can they escape. I see only unsteady walls. If the people of Tamriel must exist inside this cell, I will make sure that the walls are stable, the gaps are sealed, and all who remain stay safe within it. I've met few heroes like you. Very few. I take this matter of the Triad upon myself, but in truth, you may be the one that saves us. The prisoner who frees the world. We shall see. Farewell. He's gone, isn't he? I knew it. I never got to speak to him. Can you believe that? A hundred years of loyal service and then, poof, gone. <laughs> you know, I spent years rehearsing exactly what I would say. I stood in front of the mirror, saying it over and over. Lord Set. I stand before you as your loyal servant. Prayers of thanks, supplications, on and on. Now? Now I have nothing but questions. Why do we study in the Basilica while people struggle in the streets? Why can't we have birds like the Exodromals? How could Daedra break through our unbreakable walls? Why can't we leave? I did yesterday. Today, I'm not so sure. I have a lot of thinking to do. A lot of assumptions to challenge. Who knows? Maybe that's what Set wanted all along. I owe all this uncertainty to you. You have my gratitude, truly. Uncertainty feels... It feels... Liberating. The world's never seemed so open, so fresh, you know? I sense a new adventure just beginning. Thank you, my friend, and farewell. I think I'll visit the memorial for a while. It seems as good a place as any to be alone with my thoughts.
all over you. There's a difference between cordial and compliant. You told me to play nice with others. Now you complain? I don't have to listen to this. I'll finish exploring on my own. Sorry you had to hear that. Our family feuds aren't usually so dramatic. Raynor always requires a delicate touch, but he's never stormed off before. He hates being on his own. That whole shadow business. I didn't like the way Raynor let that high elf artificer with a dwarven control rod up his ass order us around. My brother didn't deserve to be treated so poorly. I just wish he believed it too. Before I wounded his pride, we were planning to explore this marvelous machine world. He charged off to prove he didn't need my help, and we know how that's going to turn out. I'll let him cool off, but could you make sure he stays out of trouble? What I said to Raynor was pretty harsh, but he can be so infuriating. Look, he might be a brilliant artificer. Unfortunately, he's a terrible dungeon delver. Without me, he's going to get lost or hurt. Just don't mention me when you see him. There are so many intriguing possibilities, I'm not sure which one he tried to tackle first. If I were my brother, I'd start by heading into the Radius. We talked about using that gulch with the outflow pipe as a base, so maybe begin there? Like Kwama warriors fighting for the affection of their queen. We're siblings, of course we have arguments. Raynor's a thinker, and I'm all about action. Our differences make us a great team, when we're not engaged in a heated debate. No, Raynor needs some alone time. We both do. No sense starting the same fight all over again. You go talk to Raynor. Help him work things out so we can get back to our usual sibling rivalry. Just don't let him know I sent you. Kirith doesn't appreciate my contributions to our partnership. She thinks I'd be lost without her. Well, I'll show her. My superior intellect easily outshines her bravado and daring do. But what brings you out here, my friend? That's a generous offer, but I find your sudden arrival somewhat... convenient. Did my sister send you after me? She really does think I'm as helpless as a newborn scrib without her, doesn't she? It's a fascinating place, isn't it? So much to see and learn. People in the Brass Fortress told me about a number of sites. We simply have to go and see them for ourselves. The possible discoveries, they boggle the mind. Shall we go explore? There are a number of locations I want to examine. I added them to your map. Lead on and I will follow. Don't worry. I'll provide any assistance I can, but I have to admit I'm not much of a fighter. That's more Kirith's area of expertise. Same way as you, I imagine. We were looking for the ruins of Balm's Amshend beneath Mournhold when we came across a tiny city inside a clockwork globe. Needless to say, I knew what it was the moment I saw it. The shrinking made me queasy, though. Stern. Physically intimidating. To be honest, she scares the scrib jelly out of me. Did you know she was once an Imperial battle mage? During the Riemann dynasty, while fighting in some war, a spell went awry and threw her through time and space.
The Resonant Sphere. One of Sothasil's minor marvels. There! Did you hear it? The same tone that the Central Spire emits during the Night Cycle. Let me tell you what I discovered before we move on. Did you notice the perfect symmetry? The total roundness of the form? And the way it reacted to simple, magical impulses? Incredible! If memory serves, the chimes sounded similar to the ones that ring in the Brass Fortress. Applying magic to the sphere provoked an oral response. Perhaps Sotha Seal utilizes different frequencies of sound to perform his divine workings. On the other hand, Lord Set might just appreciate good music. Tribunal doctrine strictly defines the consequences of questioning the methods and mechanisms of our living gods. The apostles here in the Clockwork City emulate Sotha Seal in their own ways. So any questions I ask seem tame by comparison. That's close enough. Don't want to disturb the, uh, wildlife. Those machines must be pumps for moving the lubricant throughout the Clockwork City. Fascinating. I have what I need. We're done here. I wonder how the lubricant winds up in the veil. Every time I answer one question, three more appear to take its place. I'm glad you asked. I surmise that a correlation exists between the lubricant and the dead organic matter inevitably created in the Clockwork City. It has to go somewhere. I speculate that those pumps distribute the grease throughout the complex. Ah, but the fabricants consist of both flesh and machine. And so do the Apostles. While the Duemo were masters of mechanical construction, Lord Set took it a step further by adding living material to the mix. Kirith... No, never mind. I saw this from a distance and was instantly intrigued. There's no rhyme or reason to its function, at least none that I can ascertain. Maybe one day I can return with an entire team. For now, let's move on. What a magnificent monolith! I wonder if the workings extend into the subterranean levels below us. Maybe that's where the true functioning takes place. That's what I've been pondering since making my meticulous inspection of the site. It's a conundrum. Despite what that Slagtown trader told me, I don't see any method for determining what time it is. Kirith suggested, no, I can do this without her. Kirith uses intuition and leaps of logic instead of sound deductive reasoning, but it works for her. More often than not, actually. She thinks the tower is part of a vast underground mechanism that makes the city function. I suppose that makes sense. We need to go back so I can tell Kirith. Damn. I can't believe I let a stupid argument cut my sister out of this. She should have been here. Not that I don't appreciate your help, mind you, but Kirith and I... We're a team. It does, doesn't it? I'm not sure how to proceed. The complexities of social interaction are Kirith's speciality, not mine. 
She's my sister and we're a team. We work well together, but she did use some harsh, hurtful words. What do you think? You're right. I can be the bigger person and apologize. I am her older and smarter brother, after all. Let's return to the Brass Fortress. Perhaps you can talk to her first and see how Kirith is doing. She's probably lost and distraught without me. you. Did everything go all right? You didn't run into any trouble, did you? Raynor requires constant supervision, especially around ruins and other ancient places. He's extremely smart, but he has few practical skills and he's easily distracted. He does, does he? Well, I have a few words for Raynor as well. We're partners, and partners don't abandon each other when the going gets rough. Anyway, thanks for making sure he got back here safe and sound. I appreciate it. Kira, I... Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have stormed off like that. I blame all this metal. I think I'm getting a rash. I'm sorry, too. I said some things that were uncalled for. Unfair. That Naramo just makes my skin crawl, you know? It's the way he talks. Humongous words and a superior attitude. Sounds like someone else I know. Now, come on and tell me what you've discovered. 